Okay. Good afternoon again. So time for the second talk. And uh, yes, feel free to start. Uh, second talk again about OpenStreetMap and Open Risk Index with the learning indicators from OSM Tax developed by machine learning and trained with the World Risk Index. Thank you very much, Marco, and also thank you very much for the opportunity to give this short speech here today. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm working at the University of Stuttgart at the Institute of Spatial and Regional Planning um, as a research assistant and also lecturer. And at the Institute, we haven't used any FOSS tools before, so um, now my colleague, which uh, convinced me last year actually to come for the first time to the Phosphor G to Dar es Salaam. And so now we, we're trying to include it in our teaching and get it more established at the university and in our institute. So basically that's the reason we are here to get new inputs and also to yeah, present something. And the idea behind this little side project was to get a justification to come here that our professor would pay for our travel expenses and for us to um, get some new inputs. So we, we had to come up with something and yeah, that's what you're gonna see today. Um, I think now looking at the title, it seems not so much comprehensive to be honest, uh, in my own words. Uh, I hope that I can clear it up in the next 20 minutes, at least a little bit. So what is the idea in a nutshell? It's basically vulnerability is a spatial concept with spatial attributes and looking at it from different angles somehow, the idea was somehow it should be included in OpenStreetMap. I had no clue how and I definitely had no clue how to get there, but somehow this idea came up last year during several inputs so on and so that was basically the starting question or the starting idea um, where we got started somehow. And we thought it's fun to do that in some free time and didn't realize how much work it could be and it was actually. Okay, so just a brief outline about my talk as um, we are today not a disaster risk conference. So I first start with some background of the World Risk Index, the idea development, to understand what is the idea of a socio-economic vulnerability, because I assume you're all not very fa familiar with this concept. And then the second um, step to how to derive with OpenStreetMap a uh, vulnerability index on a global scale. So what is disaster risk? Um, you can basically say it consists of three components. We have the hazard component, the exposure, and the vulnerability. If we now look on global climate models, it's clear that the hazard side increase in magnitude and frequency, and also the exposure is going to decrease, increase, of course. Um, looking at the vulnerability, um, it's a little bit more interesting, and just looking on a global scale is not enough because globally we could say it stays more or less the same, slight reduces, but the interesting question, how is it in space and time? So somehow we need to measure it, we have to look at it on different scales, on different levels in time and space and that's just some analysis um, done by our Institute of the World Risk Index um, looking from 2000. 12 to 17 at the vulnerability and its development and it's clearly showing that the regions worldwide are developing differently and in light of climate change adaptation the question is um, can we detect decision points or how we can we counteract those developments as we clearly having rising um, exposure rising hazard, we don't want to, to stick at the same vulnerability level because that means just we're going to increase losses in. Um, so the question is here um, how to detect those patterns and maybe explain it to find measures to counteract on different scales, um, administrative scales and different levels. So it's a huge need to, to have scalable, understandable um, 
indicators or composite measurements. One approach quite um, yeah, accepted, um, quite, or let's say a little bit different but similar to the informed risk index from the JRC, um, developed by Professor Bergman, was the World Risk Index, um, trying to focus on explaining natural hazards, so in this case, flood, sea level rise, storms, droughts, earthquakes, um, that's combined to an index of how many people of each country are annually affected, and the vulnerability component. So the question, what is socioeconomic vulnerability? It's basically here in this concept described as three main dimensions, the susceptibility, so in the short term, if you have the impact, um, what is the likelihood of suffering? Then the coping capacity, so in a short-term perspective, um, to, to avoid or to reduce negative consequences, but also look at the adaptive capacity. So is the society able in the long term um, to include new measures to avoid, to adapt to different st stressors, different levels like research, building codes, implementation. So it's um, quite looking not only at the phenomena, so because basically if a flood happens where nobody is, it doesn't matter really, so we don't mind. So the question is really here the human perspective of explaining it. Now looking into more into detail, like zooming into this vulnerability, um, the World Risk Index consists of 23 indicators, like I said, susceptibility, coping, and adaptive capacity, and again, some subtopics. And I was involved in updating this risk index by different governmental sources, and it was a lot of fun and realizing that, yeah, the indicators, sometimes the calculation was changed, countries were dropped out, um, different years, only missing years, so combining different sources, um, different country names, um, yeah, you, you name it, whatever you want, you know data, you know um, how different data sources look, and moreover, on a global scale, these global data sets um, are interesting to, to go through, and so doing that, the idea Okay. Basically, I thought there is a global data set combining a lot of those information we have seen. So infrastructure, all the socioeconomic component, and that's the OpenStreetMap database. It has a global coverage, of course, not the same coverage in each country, but having a lot of social attributes, um, cultural attributes, even what we were missing in the World Risk Index, um, hospitals, schools. So. Um, I thought just looking at these teams in both data sources, somehow they should be connected or somehow it should be possible to interchange and like derive a robust calculation based on OpenStreetMap to develop also this vulnerability. But I had no clue really um, how to do it. So four basic steps, um, each step posing some challenge of its own. Um, was the final outline we wanted to go through or we had to go through. So first of all, um, how to derive indicators from the OpenStreetMap database. Um, we just have seen the keys and tags and key value pairs and yeah, different spelling um, of the same topic, how you cope with that, how you cope this anarchy somehow, how you can it like combine it to, to valid indicators and on a global scale. So secondly, of course, working with data, you somehow um, have to, to clean them up, to structure them um, for completeness, robustness. And in a third step, um, the idea was to use machine learning, so to, to understand, to unveil the curtain, to so get this linkage from OpenStreetMap to vulnerability, um, once in a supervised way, but also in an unsupervised way which I briefly going to explain. So that we finally could um, have some global map um, for vulnerability entirely based on OpenStreetMap 
data and indicator. Coming to the first step, the indicators. Um, we downloaded the full planet file. We just heard about it. Um, reduced the text with a whitelist to somehow make it possible to work with our computational power we had available at the institute. Um, converted all nodes to clips, imported to PostGIS, and in the first step, removed text with less than 20 countries. So finally, we ended up with two data sets, um, and they were per country, just the counts. Once summed up for the keys, um, so not key value, just the keys, how often such count of key per country. And the second data set we um, worked from now on was the tag data set, so key value pairs as indicators also count per country. So in case of lines and polygons, not the areas, um, to simplify it, um, because it just would have exceeded um, the computational effort we would have needed. So it was a huge simplification in a first approach to say, okay, we count it per country, normalize it with the population, um, which is more or less not perfect approximation, but um, so we try to, to adapt with it. In the next step, um, this data set now we had was for text, basically 170 countries with 110 columns, each presenting one key as an indicator. And for the text, it was 1,342 columns also presenting indicators with counts per country. So from the statistical perspective, um, we said, okay, to have a global meaning, we want to have that it covers at least 50% of the countries. Then indicators with zero and near zero variance um, were removed. And also we did a last step, a pairwise correlation um, to say, okay, for statistical um, analysis, we want to remove two highly correlated um, indicator pairs. So we ended up with two data sets reduced and having around 30 keys and roughly around 100 tags um, for each country. So we could get started with the analysis. Um, the idea was to use a linear-based model and a non-linear model. In order, we really didn't know how vulnerability is it like some linear relation, non-linear. So it, the idea was to take Lasser regression as a dimension reduction method compared to rich regression, which is not reducing the dimension. Um, we choose Lasso because we wanted to get a subset which is understandable and usable. And in between, it was a minor step to somehow better understand the data with a regression tree and continue to the random forest. And like I briefly mentioned, um, on an explanatory level, um, just look at the 20 countries with the highest vulnerability and understand the underlying structure of the data of the OpenStreetMap. So sub-select the 20 countries and analyze with principal component analysis what are the major components within those highly vulnerable countries. So I started first with the Lasser regression. Um, it was quite some struggle to, to get the model running and, and was quite happy on a Saturday evening that finally after a day um, the model ran through and the result was basically that. So instead of having a nice map and analyzing, going into detail, my model kicked out all predictors. And um, that was not what I had expected. So, and I didn't want to present here really to say, okay, sorry guys. Um, it was a nice idea, but basically I failed. Um, yeah, all predictors were deleted and I needed a beer and a 
I took the Sunday at least definitely off. Um, I couldn't see it anymore. So somehow I tried to understand this um, results and where they come from. And it came to my understanding, at least for the data at this point, that just like linear linearity, the assumption of linearity does not reflect at all. So even using a nice uh, machine learning Luster regression algorithm with test and training data and bootstrapping and everything in it, yeah, you just still can get something like that. It just does not work because it's not the assumption um, is not right. So I tried my luck with random forest um, and I got some results, um, luckily for me, although they were also interesting. Um, I now here put on this slide, side to side, um, that's the world risk index with its components and subcomponents. And those are the most important keys of OpenStreetMap in the model for modeling vulnerability. I think it's quite interesting to see that like some um, topics are related quite directly in a first view if you look. Yeah, land use, we have the environment with a lot of environmental global indicators in it, um, infrastructure and also investment. So we have a lot of here traffic signals, traffic calming. And interesting was also that we got like fire hydrant diameter in it and as something you wouldn't get out of official global data sets, but clearly related to vulnerability. And from the others, um, you could assume some understanding of like economic capacity is measured with GDP and you could assume, but I don't want to do it now um, because it would need more statistical justification. But yeah, traffic calming could be like related to GDP somehow. So the question is here really now to go more into detail and explain which um, facets are really explained by each um, type. The same I did with the keys and then I mapped um, both models on a global scale. And actually they were quite similar, roughly around 70% of the countries were correct classified and the majority was just by one, 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 one class wrong basically. Um, the United States voted them out themselves during the last election somehow. Um, no, seriously. Uh, I don't know what happened. Um, we lost it during our modeling somewhere on the way. Uh, it should be there. It was there. Um, it, it got lost. It happens sometimes. Um, so we now see the same map based on the text. And again, like saying the prediction quality of the random forest model of the category of the country is roughly 70% and including like one class up or down, um, it's even higher. So looking at the countries with the highest um, arrow, um, looking at Malaysia, Yim, Seychelles and Cuba. So the World Risk Index set uh, category three, um, the random forest model set one. So it's an underestimation of the vulnerability for Yemen the same and for Seychelles is turned around. Um, I looked it up and I concluded basically comparing it the OpenStreetMap model with the World Risk Index that actually the model modeled closer the susceptibility component than the adaptive or the coping capacity. And I thought that's quite interesting to see that like the immediate effect of vulnerability is like better represented in the OpenStreetMap data. And that made somehow sense to me. So that somehow I could explain. Um, this difference is still open to analyze. Just going really briefly to the analysis of the 20 countries most or highest vulnerability with PCA, um, the analysis what was to set to um, like correct for 70% of the variance within the data set. Um, we had seven components and again, just like briefly, 
looking at the topics, there is a similarity um, to the components of the World Risk Index, what is quite interesting. I just basically mentioned that already at the beginning, and as I'm running a little bit out of time, want briefly to say, okay, why do we need it? We want to monitor it, we want to measure to detect trends and avoid or decrease vulnerability. What is our conclusion? Um, in three words, the first results showed that like with the simplification of counts per country, there is some way of modeling vulnerability and to monitor vulnerability based on OpenStreetMap. But on the other hand, where to go now? Um, we have first results and of course the second step is to increase transparency, robustness and validity of the model. And I think for that we would need or going to also not only look at the vulnerability, but also look at the subcomponents to better explain which linkages exist between certain aspects like adaptive or infrastructure and OpenStreetMap. So from here, yeah, the scalability was with this approach reduced and increased the robustness of the model now. So thank you very much, and um, I'm opening the questions now. I didn't prepare any questions because I didn't want to guide you. Have it, have had heard to me now for a while, and I want to be open for anything what comes up. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for the very interesting presentation. Any question from the audience? I have one. Um, so you said at the beginning you showed that in your analysis you left uh, outside some uh, some tags, some keys and values actually that were not appearing in all the countries, right? So my question is, uh, did you ask whether you may have left outside something important for the computation of the index? For example, I didn't see, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see uh, the highway tag. Uh, which might be, of course, in useful no, to, for the computation of the index. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Um, I think that's quite an important remark and comment on it. Um, the idea was to entirely um, do it computationally, so without interfering and without bringing in my own assumptions. So did I get like surprising results, but I didn't want to, like, I also found ways of selecting tags and keys first, but somehow I felt like if I would do that, we, I would bring in my assumption into it, and I wanted to um, make the model free of my own suggestions, what is related to vulnerability, and so that was in the first step the reason not to do it. On the other hand, like you said, um, exactly the tech reduction by country and also the correlation analysis um, I think would be needed to check now in a second step to say okay maybe we should include some tags in further detail which now were left out so combine it yeah thanks that's quite correct <laughs> thank you yes Um, the, the most vulnerable countries are um, generally the countries, the countries with uh, less data. So, how did you consider that in your computing? In uh, another excellent question. Um, we considered it, but um, not considered it. To be honest, here um, we. We normalized by the population, but of course we know that OpenStreetMap uh, coverage does not uh, fit this number of people in a country. So we thought about um, using some other way of normalization to use like, um, yeah, the coverage of the country or so, but um, we couldn't, we tried several things, but couldn't come up with a good solution actually. So that's the reason. Um, we, we still have to, to figure out to, to adjust for that better, yeah. Yes, one short question. 
So, um, do you think this could be used if, you know, now you kind of proved that this can be done, so, but it was kind of correlated with the other data set, so just to prove that it kind of works. But if you wanted to go forward to, to receive new data, do you think it would be possible to run that on regions uh, inside the countries, like states, to get new data? Um, two good points, and I think I, c like I would answer both. I think for the part of future new data, um, it would be really interesting to now look into some empirical validation approaches like global um, extreme event data sets and combine it and look there how you could explain the vulnerability or not really with real data, so real events. So that's like the case of how to, to include or train the index to adapt to new events in the future. I think that's an interesting approach. And secondly, um, we also thought about um, how it could be better scalable and to work on sub-regional level, sub-national level. And um, if you're interested in that, then just stay for the next talk, please. <laughs> Thanks again, Daniel, for this interesting talk and this very promising work. Uh, so we now have some minutes for the, for the audience to move between the rooms. And in the meantime, I ask to the next speaker to prepare. Thank you.